All right, so previously we had talked about stars and, and how they come together to make patterns in the sky, constellations, or unofficial patterns, what we call asterisms. And so that's, that's the uh, uh, basic idea. But then the stars themselves, when you look up at the constellation, you say, hey, there's that bright star over there, and there's the star to the left of it. You want to be able to name those stars. And so uh, how do you name a star? Well, originally, the stars were named by kind of where they were in a constellation. Uh, for example, the constellation Orion here, uh, uh, if that's the constellation Orion, then this star up here was named Betelgeuse, uh, which comes from the Arabic for armpit. And that star down there was named Rigel, and that came from the Arabic for foot. Okay. And, and so th there, there we have uh, some star names, okay, and, and so uh, uh, there's others out there, for example, uh, in the constellation Cygnus the Swan, and Cygnus the Swan kind of looks like a large cross here. It's got a couple other uh, uh, stars out here, and it's supposed to represent a bird. With, with, with wings outspread like this, okay, and, and tail, and then long neck like that. So that's, that's what it's supposed to look like, uh, is a swan, okay. So that's supposed to be a swan, okay, and all right. But we normally look at it like a big cross in the sky, okay. Now, The word Deneb means tail, and that corresponds to that star. Uh, uh, this star up here actually has the name Albirio. Uh, uh, uh. And Albirio means nose of the bird. Okay, Sirius is the brightest star in the nighttime sky, and uh, it comes from the Arabic for the scorching one. Uh, Algol is uh, in the constellation Perseus. That's the head of the Medusa. Uh, Algol actually stands for Al Rash Al Ghul. Uh, it's short for that, which means the head of the demon. So it's sometimes called the demon star. Uh, Polaris is actually a Latin name. Polaris uh, means the pole star. And if you go out at night this time of year and look to the south or south. Uh, a little bit to the southwest, uh, a little bit after sunset, there's kind of a reddish-orange star, uh, a bright reddish-orange star. Well, uh, Mars, the planet, looks reddish-orange. Well, who was Mars in mythology? Uh, Mars was the Roman god of war. Okay. Ares was the Greek god of war. And so the star Antares... Ant means rival or opposing to, so Antares means, it's Greek, it means a Greek word for rival of Ares, so it's a rival of Mars. So if you go out at night, if Mars and, and Antares are both up at the same time, they look a lot like each other, they're about the same brightness and about the same color. So this way of naming stars uh, is what we call the proper name of a star. And the proper name of a star is just a, a, a name that the star has. Now, the thing is, the Arabs named everything in Arabic. The Chinese named everything in Chinese. The Greeks named it in Greek. Uh, so all the stars that are bright out there have about as many different names as there have been languages and cultures in the history of Earth. And so these names are not at all unique. Uh, in fact, many of these stars have many, many names. Uh, so embarrassingly, astronomers got away from using those names hundreds of years ago and just designating a star by its coordinates. Uh, uh, but the common name uh, became you know, still pretty much attached to the star. And so uh, in 2016, the IAU, the International Astronomical Union, decided to publish an official list of names of stars. And so they named 125 stars. 
and, and basically these are the, the same, some of the same names that have been used since ancient times. But some of these stars have multiple names. For example, the star Polaris, that's the North Star, in the ancient world they call that star Sinusura. Uh, and so it actually has had other names. Uh, so many of these stars have lots of names. Uh, so there were a couple updates later on. By, by 2019, there were 336 official proper names of stars. There are hundreds of other names that are out there that are commonly used uh, as proper names, but they're not necessarily official. Johann Bayer, uh, uh, European astronomer uh, in the, the 1500s, uh, 16th century there, he decided that the old way of everybody naming stars themselves was not very good. This was, this was not unique. So he created a new way of naming stars that was based on of uh, the brightness of the star in a constellation. So every star is a two-part name. So the first part of the name is a Greek later, letter. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, the Greek alphabet. The second part of the name was the constellation that the star was in. And so uh, what you would do is you'd say Vega, which is the brightest star in the constellation Lyra, is called Alpha Lyrae. Now, Lyra, L-Y-R-A, you put an E on the end of it because it, that's the Latin genitive case. That's the possessive case in Latin. So that's a first declension feminine noun. Deneb is the brightest star in Cygnus. And so it'd be Alpha Cygni. Cygni, the uh, C-Y-G-N-I, because that's the possessive case, second declension masculine for Latin. Uh, Albireo is the second brightest star, so it's Beta Cygni. Uh, Polaris is the brightest star in, in Ursa Minor, so it's Alpha Ursa Minoris. And Ceres is the brightest star in Canis Major, so it's Alpha Canis Majoris. Okay, so you have to learn the Latin declinations. Uh, the brightest star in, in Centaurus is sometimes called Rigel Cantaris. Now, the term, the name Rigel Cantaris means foot of the centaur, and that, des, that differentiates it from the other Rigel in Orion. Well, remember, Rigel means foot. A lot of the constellations uh, correspond to uh, stars, uh, correspond to, to creatures, and a lot of these creatures have feet. So a star near the foot is called Rigel. So Rigel Cantaris means for the centaur, whereas the big Rigel, there's the Rigel and Orion, the foot of Orion. There's several other Rigels up there. Deneb means tail. A lot of these creatures have tails. So uh, there, there's a tail uh, to Leo that's called Denebula, and so tail of the lion. And so uh, Bayer realized that, that those were not very good, the, these proper names were not very good, so that's why I came up with this Greek letter and constellation name. So the brightest star in Centaurus would be Alpha Centauri. Now that's the name that you normally, know, you, you normally call this star to avoid confusing it with the other Rigel. Alpha Centauri is an important star because this is the closest star to the sun in space. Now, even when they did this, uh, 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 you know, they, they realized, you know, this was Latin, and, and a lot of people knew Latin in the 17th century when he published this, but by the 20th century, when the IAU made their official list of 88 constellations, what they did was they realized not everybody knew Latin, and besides, it's just really hard to write out this really long thing here, and so what you do is you write the star name by using a Greek letter and a three-letter official abbreviation for the constellation. Well, the three-letter abbreviation is not always the first three letters. For example, there's two constellations, Sagittarius and Sagitta, that both start with the same S-A-G. 
And so one of them has an official abbreviation of SGR, and one of them has an official abbreviation of SGT. Uh, Ursa Minor is the small bear. Ursa Major is the big bear. And so the official abbreviation is a capital U, capital M, lowercase i for Ursa Minor, and it's capital U, capital M, lowercase a for Ursa Major. Uh, likewise, there's a Canis major and a Canis minor, and so that's going to be CMA or CMI. And so this is the Bayer designation, and the Bayer designation is how you would name stars uh, using this system. Now, um, to help you out, on Blackboard, I have posted a list of all 88 official constellations it also gives what that constellation is supposed to represent. It also gives the genitive case or the possessive case in Latin. So if you want to give the actual name the way it's supposed to be, you can do that. And most important for you, I've also given the official three-letter abbreviation for each constellation. And so that would make it a whole lot easier to write this down, to write down the Greek letters and the official three-letter abbreviation. Now, in case you don't remember the Greek alphabet or don't know the Greek alphabet, here it is. I've also posted uh, on Blackboard a, a handout having the Greek alphabet. Uh, now, alpha is the brightest star in a constellation. Some constellations are brighter than others. So alpha or Orionis is a really bright star. Beta Orionis, gamma Orionis, Orion's a bright constellation. For some dim constellations, the alpha star is not that bright. Beta is really dim and gamma is about the dimmest you can see. Uh, uh, so, so if you, so this is relative to a constellation. Alpha, beta, gamma, first three letters of the Greek alphabet. That's be a pretty bright star in the constellation. If you get a chi, psi, or omega, one of the last letters in the Greek alphabet, you know that's a much dimmer star in the constellation. Some constellations actually have more bright stars than the Greek alphabet. Some constellations. Uh, after you get about seven or eight letters into the alphabet, you run out of stars you see with the naked eye. So that's, that's basically how it goes. Now, Bayer made a few mistakes. Alpha is supposed to be the brightest star in a constellation, but the brightest star in Orion is actually Rigel, which is Beta Orionis. Alpha Orionis is the second brightest, so he made that backwards. Castor and Pollux, those are the two bright stars in Gemini, and he got the Alpha and Beta backwards there. Uh, the seven stars that make up the Big Dipper, he just called them Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, and so forth from right to left because they're all similar in brightness. So this is not an absolute thing, but still, if it's Alpha, Beta, or Gamma, it's, a, it's relatively bright in the constellation. If it's one of these letters down here, it's pretty dim in the constellation. So that's roughly the idea of how the, the Bayer designations 